Welcome to lesson number five, faith. What does the Bible have to say about faith? Please stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. If you are new to the channel, don't you forget to like and subscribe to the Look and Live Bible Study YouTube page. Okay, friends, we are going through a series here, Touch of Faith Ministry, Simple Bible Study Course. Guys, this is lesson number five, and we're going to talk about faith today. What does the Bible have to say about faith? Why is faith such a significant subject? How do we grow our faith? These are some of the questions that we are going to answer today in our study. Okay, friends, what we're going to do right now, we're going to pause and have a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to get into the lesson. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Open the eyes of our heart, Lord, that we might see Jesus. Lord, we pray for an outpouring of your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, let's get to our study guide. If you are new to this Bible study series that I've been doing, friends. What you're going to need is to download the study guide. It is posted below. The entire folder is in the description box. Over, over 12 different lessons we are going through. So you can take the entire thing and save it on your computer or print each one of them out as we go through the lesson. And also fill in the answers and questions as we uh, as we go through this. And by the way, each particular answer and question sheet of mine will be posted in the link as well. And you can take that just in case if you are not able to fill them out while you're listening to this lesson. Okay, friends, let's do this. Let's begin by talking, by reading this little excerpt right here. The story is told of a man whose son had a dumb spirit. The disciples tried to cast it out, but were unsuccessful. He went to Jesus for help, but Jesus replied, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. The father, not sure of his faith, said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. What is the purpose of faith? How does faith lead to salvation? And how do we acquire it? Let's go to question number one. What is faith? Now, faith is the blank of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay. What does the Bible say? Let's go to the scripture. In the scripture, it says about faith being the blank. Hebrews 11 verse, verse 1. And it reads, Now faith is the what? Substance. Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the word we're looking for here is the word substance. Substance. What are the four what are the three letter words from the word substance? We have the word what? Sub. Where well, you get submarine, subway, and the idea is something that goes under. 
when you look at the word stands, what do you have? Something you stand on. So faith, in essence, could be the very foundation on which we stand on. But where do we find this faith? Let's keep on studying. Question number two. How important is faith? How important is faith? Let's go to the Bible. How important is faith? And it says this. Without faith, it is what? Without faith, it is what? Let's find out. Without faith, I already told you what it is. <laughs> Without what? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So what we have here is the word faith. Can I please God without faith? The answer is no. In order to believe in God, you need faith. And I'm going to show you in a minute, every one of us have been given a measure of faith. I'm not sure if this text is in the Bible, in our study guide. I don't think it is, but I would like to add that. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 2. All right, we're going to read a little bit here. Measure. Let me, let me look it up in my thing. All right. Every. All right. There he is. Now in Romans chapter 12, you go down to verse three. For I say through the grace given unto me that every one of you not to think himself more highly than he ought to. In other words, be humble. But set, but set your mind to be righted. Let me look. I like the King James Version better. Now look at this one. According as God has given, has dealt to every man. What? The measure of faith. And the idea is every single person has been given a measure of faith. So God has dealt to every man a portion of faith. No matter who that person is, he has enough to believe. Now, that faith needs to grow and exercise. We're going to talk about that. But that measure has been given to every man. Let's move on. Can only believing save a person? Have you ever heard people say, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Is that good enough? Is that all that it takes to be saved? Let's find out what the Bible says. Can only, can only believing save a person? James 2 verse 19 says what? James 2 verse 19. And it reads... Oh, sorry. Let me put that on your screen here. There we go. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devil also believe and tremble. So to say I believe God exists. To say I believe God is good or God is love. As many people do. Is just not good enough. A mere intellectual. Or a mere profession in God or of God does not equal salvation. So what exactly do I need to do? I need to go beyond professing that I believe in God. I need to actually accept and live in accordance with his word. Let's see what it says here. Going back to our question sheet here. And the question was asked. Can only believing save a person. Thou sayest that there is one God and thou doest well. The also also the devil also believe. And the idea is the devil believes also. 
The devil believes that God exists. He knows that God is real. He knows that God is true. That believing doesn't mean he's going to save him because it is impossible for him to be saved at this stage of his life, of course. Unlike you and I, we can be saved. But our believing in God has to go beyond just a mere profession of faith. It has to become a living principle. It has to become a reality. It has to become an acceptance of the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ. Let's look at it. Let's look at it some more. While the demons believe, they won't be saved. Mark chapter 123, for 2 Peter 2, verse 4. Therefore, we can conclude that it is impossible to have correct theology and a dead faith. This is a very strong statement here. You can have all the doctrines correct. You can have a knowledge of the word of God. As a matter of fact, you can have the entire scripture in your heart. That doesn't mean you are saved. That doesn't mean that faith is a living faith. The faith that we're talking about here goes beyond knowledge. It is something that is to be exercised in God for it to become genuine faith to be saved. Let's go furthermore. It's going to make sense as we go on. So question number four, how does one get faith and where does it come from? We are told in Hebrews 12 verse 2, look unto Jesus, the author and what? And then in Mark chapter 9, 24, let's go to Luke 12 verse 2 first. Look what the scripture says. It says, look it unto Jesus, the author and what else? Finisher. So, of what? Of our faith. So, the way I get faith is by looking to who? To Jesus Christ. Now, yes, we have a measure, but that faith needs to grow. It needs to be exercised. The muscles and the sinew of faith must be strengthened. How is this going to be done? By spending quality time with Jesus Christ. Let's move on. In Mark, it says, The father of the child cried out, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. What you just hear here, guys, it is one of the most amazing prayer that you can pray. This is a prayer of faith right here. And if you feel weak, my dear friends, you can simply ask for God. You can ask God to increase your faith. If you feel like you don't know what to do, how to do it, where you should go in order for your faith to increase, you can cry out to God, Lord, increase my faith. Help thou my unbelief. And that's my prayer this morning. That's my prayer today. That's my prayer for you. That the Lord will strengthen your faith. We are told, furthermore, what is saving faith based on? What is saving faith based on? So then faith cometh by what? And by the word of who? Let's see what it says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17 here. Romans 10, 17. All right, there we have. So then faith cometh how? By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So therefore, we need to do what? In order to have faith, we need to hear the word of who? Whose word? Philosophers? Man-made word or the news all day long, nonstop? No. We need to hear the words of scripture being spoken. This is the reason why. Going to church is significant because when you go to the house of God, 
you have an opportunity to hear the word of God. Now, go to the churches that are preaching the word. <laughs> there are some churches, I don't know what they're talking about. They got into the social gospel, political gospel. They're talking about everything else but the word of God. Don't go there, but go to places where the word of God is become a living principle. It is the foundation of the discussion. It is the the, the subject of the, the, the entire worship experience. There you go worship. Because as you hear the word of God, as you hear the stories, as you pay attention to the scriptures, as the scripture is quoted and the, 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 the parables come to you, the object lessons, and you see the Old Testament and how it parallels in, in your own personal walk, in your own personal life, your faith in God increases. This is why you should never neglect the study of the scripture you should never neglect hearing the word of god let's move on now in this part of the lesson let's go to question number six it says what is the, what is the relationship between faith and obedience it says in hebrews 11 verse 8 and also James chapter 2 verse 20. By what? Let's find out what Hebrews 11 verse 8 says. Hebrews 11 verse 8. Now this is talking about Abraham's experience here. And it says what? By what? How did Abraham do it? By faith. Sorry about this. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, what did he do? Obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went. How did Abraham do it? He did it by faith. God called Abraham from a life of that was really good. It's almost like God called him in, out of Hollywood and he, he sent him into the ghetto. It seems as though that's what God was doing. Into a valley, into a desert. But no, God had a plan though. God had a plan. Now look what the Lord did for Abraham. But Abraham obeyed God by faith. Look what it says. He received an inheritance. Now after inheritance, what do we have? He obeyed. So how did Abraham obey? He obeyed by faith. And have you ever found yourself struggling to obey God? Well, the secret to obedience is faith. Faith. Take God at his word. And the word of God has power that causes you to obey. Did you hear what I say? The secret of obedience is faith in the word of God. It says here, in James chapter 2, verse 20. But will thou know, O vain man, that what? That what? That faith is the word. Without what? Without works is dead. Let's look into the Bible, James 2, 20. Just in case you don't say, I said it myself, right? Just James 2, 20. And it reads, Will thou now, O vain man, that faith without what? Without works is what? Dead. So therefore, to say I believe also mean you will, as a result of you believing, produce good works. So the works that we do don't save us. But when we are saved, our works will testify of our salvation. Because if I claim to be a Christian, I will reflect the Christian life through my lividity, through my life, through my experience, through my character. I will produce the fruit of faith. So works is not the means of salvation, but works are the fruit of faith. What is faith connected to? Is the next question what is faith connected to revelation 14 verse 12 and then romans 3 21 here is the patience of the saint here are they that do what 
to the commandments of God and have what faith on what in Jesus or the faith of Jesus. Let's go to our scripture here, Revelation 14, 12. This is another good one. I love this text. Look what the Bible says here. Revelation 14, 12 says this. Here is the patience of the saints. How are they? Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And what else? And have the faith of Jesus. There is a spirit in Christianity that speaks against God's law as if it is something bad. They make you feel to obey God is evil. They make you feel as though to be obedient to the word of God is legalism. As if uh, that becomes a means of salvation. Now, we have to admit, obedience to the law of God doesn't save us. It's not what saves us into the kingdom of God. But... If we know what we ought to do and we choose not to do it, it becomes sin. Therefore, disobedience can keep us out of heaven. Let me explain to you what I mean. I don't want to go too deep here. Let's go to the scripture very quickly. I want to give you another scripture in James chapter 4. Look what it says in verse 17 of that chapter. Now, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So we ought to obey God. We ought to have good works. We ought to bear fruit of righteousness. And the works that we produce are the fruit of faith. So if I say I'm a Christian, but I feel that I, I but yet I don't feel the need to do what God calls me to do. Therefore, by my own life experience, I deny the faith. This is why the world calls us hypocrites. That's not a good thing. But the true Christian, though he has struggles, but when you look at him, you can see there is a pattern of obedience. There is a consistency in his life. He may struggle and fail, but this doesn't determine his experience because he is consistent in his walk with God. And therefore, his fruit testifies that his faith is genuine. You cannot make the mistake of what many evangelicals are saying today that obedience to the law of god is a bad thing no no don't fall for that that is a lie from the devil himself friends what we are told is this those who have faith will keep the commandments of god because they have faith in jesus do we then make void of the law through faith yea god forbid what do we do then do we get rid of the law because we become a christian <coughs> as we know it is not the works that we produce that save us it is the works that christ has done the one that he did on calvary's cross the life that he lived his resurrection is our salvation what jesus did he's the grace of christ he's the salvation of men christ is the savior of the world but once i become a child of god by faith what do i do then do i stop and continue to live in sin no let's see what it says here in romans chapter 3 and we are going to look at verse verse um i believe it's verse 33 right might be wrong yeah verse 31 all right romans chapter 3 verse 31 look what it says do we then make boy the law through faith god forbid yay we do what to the law we establish the law this is significant word here establish Establish, and I like what the, the 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 ISV says. We uphold the law, so we don't get rid of the law. No, we establish the law. Establish means we make it a part of our lives, because Jesus has saved me from sin. Therefore, the Scripture tells us in First John three verse four that disobedience is when we break the law of God because whenever the law of God is broken it is called transgression of God's law so therefore by doing this we commit sin so when a person become a Christian he try to live in a way to please God that means he obeys God he believes God yes when he falls he goes to God for repentance and he gets back up and keep on walking he does what pleases God and that is what it means 
means to have faith that has been established upon the foundation of the word of God. That's what it means to be saved. Now, let's go to question number eight. What is the result of having saving faith? Galatians 3.23 and also John chapter 1st John 5 4 Romans 5 verse 1 Galatians 5 verse 1 let's go through this very quickly Galatians 3 20 26 not 23 Galatians 3 26 and it reads we're gonna go through them each one after another for you are all children of God by who by faith in Jesus Christ so how am I, let me put that back on your screen here, sorry. Now it says, you are all children of God by faith in who? In Jesus Christ. So there you have it. So you are all children of God by faith. Let's look at this one more time, 26. For you are all the children of God. The children of God. So the word we're looking for is the children of God. How do I become a child of God? You, it happens by faith. It happens by faith. So when you have faith in Jesus, you become a child of God. Whosoever is born of God. Now listen to this. Victory overcomes the world, even our faith. 1 John 5 verse 4. Let's go to our Bible. Let's not assume Let's not assume or presume. 1 John 5, verse 4. The scripture tells us here, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our what? Our faith. How do I overcome the world? Whosoever is born of who? Of God overcometh. He overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our, our faith. So we are told it is by faith that we overcome the world, sin, and everything in it. Therefore, being what? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Let's go to the Bible. And it says, therefore, being what? justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ the way we become justified or being made just righteous it happens by faith that we have in jesus and the word justification here means to be acquitted to be as though you've never sinned it's a beautiful word look what it says here in galatians 5 verse 5 for we through the spirit wait for the hope of blank by blank galatians 5 verse 5 let's see what the scripture says and it reads for we through the spirit wait for the what for the hope of righteousness by faith so this is talking about the second coming here even waiting for christ to return it also speaks it is something that happens by faith now but it's also no i mean particularly this is dealing with the idea of being made righteous it happens by faith now let's go to question number nine very good very good answers here we are moving along guys we are almost done how is the christian to walk for we walk by what guys very simple we walk by faith abraham walked by faith he obeyed by faith Everything that is to be done in the Christian experience ought to be done by faith. In 2 Corinthians 5, just in case you want to see the scripture, you want to make sure that I'm not lying to you. Let's get to the Bible. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ. No, no, no. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. For we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. Remember that. It is not uh, the works that we produce that saves us. Uh, it is the faith in Jesus that does. So therefore, how do we live? We live the same way that we were saved, right? We are, we walk by faith. We live by faith that we have in Jesus Christ. So now let's go to question number 10. 
Why must we walk by faith? Hmm? Why must we walk by faith? In other words, we may not have all the answers right away. Why must we walk by faith? Ephesians 6 verse 16. And it says this. Ephesians 6 verse 16. And the Bible reads, Above all, taking the shield of faith. When I take on the shield of faith, what's the reason? Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What is the devil going to try to do at you? Throw, 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 throw at you? He's going to throw what the Bible refers to as fiery darts. So we need to take the shield of faith so that we can quench. And I got news for you. When you become a Christian, the fiery darts are being thrown at you. The devil wants to uh, get you to become discouraged. He wants you to quit. He wants you to stop trusting and stop believing in God. Therefore, you hear false teachings such as evolution, postmodernism, a lot of misinterpretation of God's word, a lot of other confusing aspects as well, a lot of twist and turn. These are fiery darts. And sometimes when you commit sin, the fiery dots will come to be discouraged and to stop trusting in God. When you have faith in Jesus, you can put off that shield, put on your shield of faith. You can quench these fiery darts. You will never give up trusting in God because you know that faith in his word and his promises will sustain you in your time of need. In Romans chapter 8 verse, verses 1 and 4, the scripture says in Romans 8 Verses one and four. Therefore, now no, there is no condemn. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There is what no condemnation. No condemnation. So we are told that there is no, there is therefore no condemnation, friends. No condemnation. When you become a child of God. There is no condemnation. You are free from the condemnation because you have experienced what the Bible refers to as justification, sanctification, and soon to be glorified as well, or glorification. Now, let's look at this, my dear friends. It says, furthermore, in verse 4 of the same chapter, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So, what happened then? To the righteous of the law that becomes fulfilled in you because you choose to put faith in jesus you are no longer condemned and this experience all by itself happens by faith what is the purpose then of faith it says whom having not seen you believe in whom who through uh you seen him not yet believe you believe with joy unspeakable full of glory receive the end of your faith even the what of your souls first peter 1 verse 9 let's go to verse 9 of first peter 1 it says in first peter 1 verse 9 the bible says here receive the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls what why is it important because salvation can only be received by faith. Even translation, even the second coming, even a new mind, a new body, even in heaven, it is something that, to be, that is to be accepted by faith. And my final question is this. Are you willing? Are you willing to live by faith and obey all that Christ has said? My answer is a resounding yes. Yes, I accept. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Okay. Let's go through this very quickly, guys. Are you ready? What have we learned today about faith? We, are, we speak about a father's prayer to, for the Lord to increase his faith. We spoke about that, right? So now, particularly, 
we are going to look at a number of things. Number one, we ask the question, what is faith? And we told that the faith, we are told in scripture that faith is the substance of things hoped for. And secondly, we ask the question, how important is it to have faith? Without faith, you cannot please God. It is impossible. And then, can, can only believing save a person? We told, no, the devil also believes and tremble. So we have to take our faith to the next level. We have to apply it. How does one get faith? Where does it come from? We ought to look to Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And we ought to pray. Just like the man prayed, Lord, help my unbelief. But where do we guess faith from? What is the baseline of faith? It is the word of God. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need to study the scripture as well. Number six, the relationship between faith and work is that Abraham that had faith and that faith led him to obey. The same way if we have faith, we're going to produce good works as well. What is connected to faith? We are told obedience is connected to faith. Obedience to the law of God is directly connected to faith. And when we become a child of God by faith, we establish the law. The result of saving faith means you are a child of God. You overcome the world. You are justified. You are no longer condemned. And we are told that we're going to wait for the righteousness by faith. Number nine, how is the Christian to walk? He ought to walk by faith and not by sight. That means walk by the word of God. Why must we walk by faith? Because the devil is going to throw his fiery darts at you. And the shield of faith, you could use that to quench them. You should not be weak in your walk. Satan will come after you. Stand firm for what you believe. We are told it is the righteousness of the law will be fulfilled in you. Because you are no longer condemned. You have been justified. You have been set apart by the word of God. You are cleansed of all your sins. What is the purpose of faith? The purpose of faith ultimately is that we receive the salvation of our souls. And the question is, are you willing to live by faith and obey that what Christ has said? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. It's a resounding yes. Friends, here we are today. What is the next study? The next study is going to be, let me pull that up for you right now. The next study is going to be about prayer. We're going to talk about prayer, lesson number six. Why is prayer significant? Friends, I'm going to tell you something. Faith is one of the most difficult things in the world to grow. Because of so much distraction and issues and trouble and temptation that we face in the world. But at the same time, God has made it possible. Despite the circumstances and challenges that we do face, we can still become strong in faith. Why? He gave us his word. He gave us his promises. He gives us life experience. Do you understand? He also gives us trials. Yes, trials plays a significant role. And the next one is, is the ability to obey, the ability to exercise faith. As you apply faith, it only gets stronger. And I want to encourage you today. Put your faith to use. Let your faith work in your favor. Let the word of God order your life. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to hear, to understand, and to believe. This subject was about faith, Lord, and our faith is weak. My faith is weak. Lord, increase my faith. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Do the same for those who are listening right now, Father, that they will find the faith and the courage to face whatever situation that they are facing at this time of their life. Lord, I pray that you will help them to be strong in God. That they will have on the shield of faith. That doubts and fear will dissipate. Courage and strength 
will become theirs. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, friends. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's study. Let's continue on in our series here. We have prayer coming up next. We got to study what this is all about. Until next time, look unto Jesus and live by faith. Have a good one. Bye.